Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And here's a big one. We're gonna be talking about the newest album from Linkin Park called One More Light. So recently, Linkin Park has made some headlines in probably the worst way possible going into a new album, telling their fans to move the fuck on from their debut album, their landmark album, Hybrid Theory. And I want to unpack why this is possibly the last thing you want to say going into the release cycle and promotion of a new album. Because look, on some level, I get it. Credit where it's due, Linkin Park have shown themselves willing to evolve and push their sound. Not exactly in a way that's all that revolutionary or experimental beyond the mainstream, but it does take a band with some real stones to follow Minutes to Midnight with A Thousand Suns, which, for the record, I'm still on board liking that album a lot more than a lot of Linkin Park fans. It's actually quite good if you give it a chance. You know, those fans, right, that probably discovered you thanks to Hybrid Theory selling millions upon millions of copies and being a permanent staple in many people's collections. And even though I personally think Hybrid Theory has aged pretty badly, I get why people love it. It does have its moments. I get why it's so rapidly celebrated by so many people. So while I get that Linkin Park wants to move on from Hybrid Theory, and I completely understand their frustration with entitled fans who want them just to make another version of it and stay in that lane, maybe that's not the best marketing decision to call that out right before you want those fans to slap down money and buy your newest album. And this is not Linkin Park at their strongest either. Rock radio has changed dramatically and downsized considerably. Hip-hop and electronic music has moved into wildly different territory. And their lead-off single, hoping to cross over to pop radio heavy with Kiara, has not exactly been well received, especially by those hybrid theory airy fans who will be your most guaranteed source of income. Worse still, it comes across less like Linkin Park are pushing into new territory sonically and more just trying to keep up with the mainstream, even if it's not an intentional artistic choice. Which, to some extent, I would get after their 2014 album, The Hunting Party, failed to cross over to the Hot 100. But they're at the point in their careers when they could easily just headline festivals for the next 30 years and not give a damn about mainstream radio because The Hunting Party was a pretty good album. Either way, it was not a good sign going into the new album, One More Light. And despite only really being a casual Linkin Park fan, I I was kind of nervous going into this. So, how'd it turn out? Well, folks, I gotta be honest, I don't have much to say about this one. Put it simply, it's a mainstream pop record, not a rock record, of the dour percussion over melody variety that takes all the firepower of a Linkin Park album and mutes it. Now, you can argue why that happened. Maybe Linkin Park came to the sound organically by accident, which is not implausible given their relationship with hip hop and the tendency for monochromatic production. Or maybe it's because for the first time in their history as a group, they pulled a Maroon 5 and brought on board eight additional pop songwriters. But at the end of the day, it does not make for an interesting or engaging listen, especially if you're expecting a Linkin Park album to have any actual groove or impact or intensity or firepower. So we might as well start off with the production here and here's a friendly tip if you're gonna listen to this album I'm not sure I can really recommend reading the interviews from the band or the producers going in but between Mike Shinoda's naive claims that this is the riskiest material they've ever made and seriously did anyone besides me forget a thousand suns happened and Brad Delson talking about all the nifty little guitar blends on this album well you just get the sinking feeling that they might not be aware of what they actually made here okay sure if you listen closely some of these blurry textures in between the synth lines and the trap snares and the hi-hats and all the vocal samples, they might be guitars, but it's not like they have got a lot of weight or impact or even much melody thanks to all that thick cushion of reverb that swaddles this album. Okay, you know what? That's not entirely fair. As I didn't mind the guitar line that actually runs through talking to myself, it is audible, and the liquid tones that hold up the title track do lend the song some actual spacey ambiance that, yeah, I can appreciate that. But when you compare them to the oddly jaunty guitar lines and Sorry For Now juxtaposed against some plainfully clumsy and overdone drops in an EDM mold, or especially on sharp edges, it sounds like it was pulled from a modern indie folk tune a la High Valley or Mumper and Sons. They might be experimental for the band, but they're not experiments that work. Or to recontextualize a quote from fellow music critic Todd in the Shadows here on YouTube about Battle Symphony, if this is your idea of a fight song with its trap snares and its lumpy synth, you're gonna lose, even compared to other songs and Linkin Park's discography. And on the topic of synth, you know what? There was a halfway decent wiry line on Invisible that picked up a little bit of distortion on the outro that I kind of liked, but none of it has much swell or impact or even all that much groove. And considering the percussion is nearly always at the front of the mix, the melodies increasingly just run together.
together here, devoid of texture or presence, and that doesn't help the hook stand out either. And this is increasingly not helped by the vocals. Now let's put aside the utterly throwaway verses from Pusha T and Stormzy on Good Goodbye. Mike Shinoda, he's got a good verse there, probably the best of them. And to his credit on songs like Invisible and Sorry For Now, he's got some emotive presence. But the real problem, it's Chester Bennington. And sure, I understood that there wasn't going to be screaming on this album going in. I thought it was a bad decision, but I understood it. But this is compounded by two big issues. One, for how often on songs like Heavy and Sharp Edges, his vocal pickup sounds painfully thin, emphasizing the frailness in his tone. But also on songs like Talking to Myself, and especially on Halfway Right, it's clear that he's on the verge of screaming. Hell, he even references it in the lyrics on the latter song. But he never actually does scream, which leaves both songs missing the impact that they desperately could use. It wouldn't be that big of a compromise. But on the subject of lyrics, apparently all the writing was put together first before the instrumentation and production was on this album. So you would think that with the more muted presentation that it would be greater emphasis would move on those lyrics and go to the forefront. Instead, uh, well, okay, I'll give Linkin Park a little bit of credit for growing up a little bit and showing a little bit of self-awareness and digging into their own personal issues. Talking to myself is from the perspective of Chester Bellington's wife singing back to him about constantly being on the road and going through his own mental issues, which Mike Shinoda then echoes from his perspective on his kids on Sorry For Now, where he tries to excuse constantly being on tour. It's a little bit better on Invisible, where as his kids are growing up, he doesn't want them to feel invisible or unvalued, even if they're just not listening to him at this point. But even on these songs, they feel really underwritten, and it really reflects how basic and bland so much of this poetry is. Stripped of a lot of the detail that could at least make a Linkin Park album halfway distinctive, sometimes outright incompetent like on Heavy. All that acknowledgement about how your flaws and pain can be draining to others around you loses some of its impact when Kiara then tries to actively skirt responsibility on her verses, but more often than not, it's just thin writing. It lacks detail, like the by-the-numbers self-esteem material on Battle Symphony, or the whole what doesn't kill you make you stronger cliches that pour off of sharp edges. Even songs that are meant to be more personal feel more distant than they probably should, like on Halfway Right, a song about struggling with addiction and self-destructive impulses that yet again feels more hazy and distant than actually feeling visceral, or the title track, an anti-suicide song where it's implored that even if your light is one of a million that flickers out because you only exist for a moment in time, but he still cares. And yet, by the very mention of that sort of broader scope, the million stars, it kind of compromises the intimacy of the few details that we do get on the verses. It kind of hurts the song. Oh, look. I don't hate this album, but that's because there's really not enough here to hate. There's no greater swell or impact in the production or the delivery. The writing is overly broad and feels all the more cliched and flimsy upon frequent re-listens. And if this isn't a cynical attempt to remain relevant, it's utterly clueless on how it would sound and be then forgotten by the mainstream public, especially by Linkin Park fans. I mean, there are a few decent songs where the band tries to get more personal. I will acknowledge that. I'm mean, in between some misconceived electronic drops some bland guest appearances, and a blur of sounds that strips out texture and yet not placed in the mix properly to complement the melody, I found this pretty lackluster and pretty tedious, netting a strong 5 out of 10, and only a recommendation for diehard Linkin Park fans. Otherwise, I'm not really interested in this experiment, because I know they can do better. I want to hear that. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Linkin Park fans, polls right there. Here's a chance for you to tell me how wrong I am. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. If you want to buy the album, link's in the description below. And if you guys want to get more involved in my scheduling process, the link to my Patreon is right there, where three times a week you guys get to vote on the albums coming up, and once per week you guys in the higher tiers get to add album set list. More details right there, but till then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.